In this video series, we're going to turn our attention to alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. These are compounds that contain a double or triple bond between the alpha and beta carbons adjacent to a carbonyl group. And the carbonyl group can be part of an aldehyde, ketone, ester, amide, or any other carbon, carbonyl containing functionality that we've seen previously. Alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds possess two electrophilic sites, the carbonyl carbon and the beta carbon. And resonance structures can illustrate this. What this means is that when nucleophiles react with these compounds, they can do so in two ways. They can either add to the carbonyl carbon, and we've seen that before, or they can add to the beta carbon in a nucleophilic addition step. And eventually, this leads to the formation of products in which the nucleophile has formed a new bond to the beta carbon, and the carbonyl group remains intact. This is the product of an addition reaction, the addition of H and the nucleophile across the carbon-carbon pi bond, ultimately. Notice that we've added a hydrogen to the alpha carbon, in addition to a bond to the nucleophile at the beta carbon. These are called conjugate addition reactions. And in this series of videos, we're going to focus on identifying which type of nucleophiles engage in conjugate addition reactions selectively. Many still engage in what we call 1-2 additions, or typical additions to the carbonyl carbon, even with alpha beta unsaturated carbonyls. However, certain types of nucleophiles in the presence of these compounds engage in conjugate additions selectively. Before we dive into all that, I want to use an analogy to something you may have seen before, the hydrohalogenation of conjugated dienes. Conjugated dienes are analogous to alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds, and they too can react in addition reactions in two ways. In a 1-2 addition process, H and the nucleophile add to the 1 and 2 carbons, and here it's carbon 2 that serves as the electrophile. In a 1-4 addition process, it's carbon 4 that serves as the electrophile. The reason we obtain these two products becomes very clear if we look at the mechanistic details of this reaction. In the first elementary step, carbon 1 is protonated with the hydrohalic acid to form a carbocation intermediate, and initially it looks like carbon 2 is the electrophilic position. However, we can draw resonance structures that illustrate that carbon-4 is also electrophilic. An alternative resonance form has positive formal charge at carbon-4. This means that chloride can add to carbon-2, and this results in 1-2 addition, or chloride can add to carbon-4, and this ultimately results in 1-4 addition. At the end of the day, these two products are derived from an intermediate in which we find electrophilic carbons in a 1-3 relationship, separated by a single carbon spacer, we might say. And we find the same structural pattern in unsaturated carbonyl compounds. So let's turn our attention there now. The carbonyl group is electron withdrawing. This means that we can push the electrons in the CO double bond toward oxygen to generate a resonance structure containing a carbocation. And note the analogy to the resonance stabilized cation that we saw in the last slide. There's a third resonance form of the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl group that places the positive charge at the beta carbon. And we generate it by pushing the pi electrons in the CC double bond toward the positive charge. The two resonance structures drawn here show us that both the carbonyl carbon and the beta carbon are electrophilic, and both can react with nucleophiles. When the carbonyl carbon reacts, the nucleophile adds here, and when the beta carbon reacts, the nucleophile adds here. Addition to the carbonyl carbon looks a lot like the nucleophilic additions we've seen previously. The nucleophile forms a bond to the carbonyl carbon, and the carbonyl oxygen is protonated, forming a hydroxyl group. This is called 1-2 addition, since hydrogen and the nucleophile add to positions 1 and 2 in the 4-atom alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl group. However, the beta carbon is also electrophilic, and in a 1-4 addition process, the nucleophile forms a bond to the beta carbon, which is carbon-4, in this 4-atom pi system. At the end of these reactions, the carbonyl group remains intact, which makes it look like this is not a 1-4 addition. It looks more like a 3-4 addition if we notice that a hydrogen has been added to carbon-3. However, the important point here is that this reaction could involve an enol intermediate or a resonance stabilized enolate in which re one resonance form has negative charge on O, and both of these structures are reminiscent of a 1-4 addition process. And so, for example, if an enol forms, the final product we get is the keto form of that intermediate enol via tautomerization. Moving forward in this video series, we're going to focus on 1-4 addition, and our next topic will be how to distinguish between nucleophiles that engage in 1-2 addition and nucleophiles that engage in 1-4 addition, which is also called conjugate addition.